Okay, in this tutorial, I want to pick up a, a third shift. Talked about the Reformation, talked about the shift from feudalism to capitalism, and now I want to talk about a educational shift, which is the shift from medieval scholasticism to humanism. And it, this this shift, too, sort of creates a sense of the I or sense of the self in, in the modern way that we understand it and experience it. Uh, and this shift, this shift is goes like this, or something like this. In, in the medieval world, people certainly studied, uh, and they thought, and they wrote, and they they wrote a great deal. But they did it within the scholastic tradition, which was very much tied to the monastic tradition, the, the monasteries. That is, people studied and thought, but they did so as monks, and not surprisingly, as monks, they did so with an eye towards learning only to know God. That is, whatever you studied here was to know God. That's fundamentally different from humanists and the humanistic tradition, which really gets going in the, in the, in the 16th century with people like Erasmus on the continent or Sir Thomas More in England who lived a generation or so before Shakespeare. And what the humanists argued was you should study primarily the, the Greeks and the Romans, the classical tradition. You should study these, these schools of thought and these, these complex situations that had come before, but you should study to improve yourself and improve the world. And again, this was fundamentally different from the system of medieval scholasticism. There, you studied only to know God. The study you did didn't move anything along. Right, uh, it was very, in that sense, very much connected to the feudal economic system, which was things were set. God didn't want you moving around and changing them. And the humanists, Erasmus, and again Sir Thomas More being the the principal um, examples for us, more in particular in, in in the English tradition, they said, no, study, improve yourself, learn things from the Greeks and Romans, and by improving yourself, improve the world. Moore wrote a very famous text that you may have read, and in, in, in again, in another literature course called Utopia, which isn't about sort of a perfect world, but it was one of the first texts which asked people to imagine things different than they are. That's what was so striking about Utopia as a, as a, as a literary text or as a philosophical text. And again, it came out of this humanist conception of things that you could study and improve yourself. Uh, the word humanism comes down to us today, and there's, there's a great deal of irony here. Uh, you're in a Shakespeare course in the English department, and that's the humanities. And if you are a humanities major or an English major, God bless you, someone at some point in your family life has said, what are you going to do with that? As if studying the humanities, English, philosophy, history, was the most impractical thing in the world. But the fact of the matter is, is that the humanities was the most practical form of study. In fact, it was the form of study that said for the first time that study itself could be useful. And that marked a significant change from medieval scholasticism. And it also, I hope you see at this point, links to the Reformation and it links to the shift of feudalism to capitalism in that the humanist tradition puts the emphasis on the individual the individual actor who can study and improve himself or herself and therefore the world. So that's another one of these changes, one of these historical shifts that points towards the modern eye.